everybody, welcome back to the Here to See channel. Have another Here journal for you. Genesis chapter 37 in the first book of the Bible, Genesis. The Here to See channel focuses on sharing pearls of wisdom, nuggets of knowledge, understanding the different, difficult, and instructions for a better life. We're reading through the entire book of Genesis, a chapter at a time, doing a Here journal on each chapter. Here journaling is a method many find edifying to their personal relationship with the Lord. So check out replicate.org to learn more about here journaling. But now, let's read and listen to Genesis chapter 37 in the New Living Translation from the YouVersion Bible app. Then I'll share my here journal with you. Chapter 37 Joseph's Dreams So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was seventeen years old, he often tended his father's flocks. He worked for his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wives, Bilhah and Zilpah. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. One night Joseph had a dream, and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream. He said, We were out in the field, tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly my bundle stood up, and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, So you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. Soon Joseph had another dream, and again he told his brothers about it. Listen, I have had another dream, he said. The sun, moon, and eleven stars bowed low before me. This time he told the dream to his father as well as to his brothers. But his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that? he asked. Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. Soon after this, Joseph's brothers went to pasture their father's flocks at Shechem. When they had been gone for some time, Jacob said to Joseph, Your brothers are pasturing the sheep at Shechem. Get ready, and I will send you to them. I'm ready to go, Joseph replied. Go and see how your brothers and the flocks are getting along, Jacob said. Then come back and bring me a report. So Jacob sent him on his way, and Joseph traveled to Shechem from their home in the valley of Hebron. When he arrived there, a man from the area noticed him wandering around the countryside. What are you looking for? he asked. I'm looking for my brothers, Joseph replied. Do you know where they are pasturing their sheep? Yes, the man told him. They have moved on from here, but I heard them say, let's go on to Dothan. So Joseph followed his brothers to Dothan and found them there. Joseph Sold Into Slavery when Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. As he approached, they made plans to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns. We can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. But when Reuben heard of their scheme, he came to Joseph's rescue. Let's not kill him, he said. Why should we shed any blood? Let's just throw him into this empty cistern here in the wilderness. Then he'll die without our laying a hand on him. Reuben was secretly planning to rescue Joseph and return him to his father. So when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped off the beautiful robe he was wearing. Then they grabbed him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Then, just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and saw a caravan of camels in the distance coming toward them. It was a group of Ishmaelite traders taking a load of gum, balm, and aromatic resin from Gilead down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain by killing our brother? His blood would just give us a guilty conscience. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to those Ishmaelite traders. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. 
So when the Ishmaelites, who were Midianite traders, came by, Joseph's brothers pulled him out of the cistern and sold him to them for twenty pieces of silver, and the traders took him to Egypt. Some time later, Reuben returned to get Joseph out of the cistern. When he discovered that Joseph was missing, he tore his clothes in grief. Then he went back to his brothers and lamented, The boy is gone! What will I do now? Then the brothers killed a young goat and dipped Joseph's robe in its blood. They sent the beautiful robe to their father with this message. Look at what we found. Doesn't this robe belong to your son? Their father recognized it immediately. Yes, he said. It is my son's robe. A wild animal must have eaten him. Joseph has clearly been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and dressed himself in burlap. He mourned deeply for his son for a long time. His family all tried to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. I will go to my grave mourning for my son, he would say, and then he would weep. Meanwhile, the Midianite traders arrived in Egypt, where they sold Joseph to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Potiphar was captain of the palace guard. And that was Genesis chapter 37 in the New Living Translation from the U Version Bible app. Now, for my hair journal, first the highlight, Genesis chapter 37, verses 1 through 4, Joseph's dreams. Verse 1, So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, he often tended his father's flocks. He worked for his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wives, Bella and Zippeth. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things that his brothers were doing. Jacob loved Joseph more than any other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because his father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. So, what's my explanation? Genesis chapter 37 has the beginning of the story of Joseph. Joseph was loved most by Jacob as he was birthed by Rachel in an old age. Joseph's brothers hated him because of Jacob's favor in him. So, what's my application? We can learn from Jacob's error that we should not sow discord within our own families. The Lord's instruction is clear. We're to raise up our children in the way they should go through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Reference Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in discipline and instruction of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 to 5. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment, a promise, that it may go well with you, that you may live in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Bond servants, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart, as you would Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 7 You shall teach them diligently to your children, shall talk to them when you sit in your house, 
when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Honor your father and mother and your days may be long in the land that the Lord has given you. So, what's my response? Lord, thank you for your salvation. I thank you, Lord, for my children and grandchildren. I pray that they will be ever faithful to you and will bring up their descendants with the leading of you, Holy Spirit. I pray that those that do not know you May they come to a saving knowledge and new life in you. Amen. Amen. And now, how about you? Why don't you try some here journaling? Highlight, explain, apply, respond. You'll be so glad you did. Comment below. Share your experiences with us. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? If not, read the Gospel of John chapter 3 to learn about His forgiveness and talk to God about it. You can talk to God about anything. Talk to Him about your children and your grandchildren. God bless.